No, we're not going to do that. We're going to do this. Let's go. I don't want to do that either. Okay. Let's do this one. This is the one I want to do right here. Okay. This has only got one slide. This is a really a good slideshow because it's only got one slide. All right. Now then, this is the reason I'm doing this right now is because we're doing air conditioning. This is air conditioning class. The first day is air conditioning class. Now you're sort of you kind of went through air conditioning class last time. It's not going to hurt you to be here. Okay. Got that. All right. Now, can anybody identify any of these parts of this AC circuit? Right. All right. Which one? Compressor. The compressor is the FDV joker in the bottom center. Right here. That's the compressor. Right. Okay. Is that an orifice tube? Why do we need a compressor? Because you got to compress the gas. Well, that's not a bad idea. What happens if I don't pull all of the air out of the system and I just put the refrigerator in there on top of the air? That moisture, right? No. What happens is you have an air compressor. You have an air compressor, and you know what happens then? The uh, high side pressure jumps up to about 500 pounds in about 30 seconds whenever you fire it up. That's why it's important to get all the air out before you put it in. Why? Because air will not condense and turn into liquid. It just remains air. You know what I mean? All right. So there's the canister that you put the uh, refrigerant in. Yes. That's the yeah. accumulator. That's actually the accumulator, yeah. And uh, But now on the ones with the thermal expansion valve, you're going to have a uh, device called a receiver dryer that's going to be on this liquid line. So remember that. If it's got a receiver dryer, you know, the, the little receiver dryer that's on the liquid line is going to have an expansion valve, not a fixed orifice. The fixed orifice is going to, we're going to talk in a minute a little bit more about this, but i got to get everybody acclimated. I try to punch through as far as I can and as fast as I can on this. Incidentally, here's a little flow chart I built that I may give you guys a copy of. <laughs> Extremely basic stuff when it comes to when the AC doesn't work, what you do, Hello. and how your flow of thinking is supposed to work. All right, now, all we got here is this part right here, and inside here is the part you can't see. Right? It looks almost the same. Yeah. Right inside there, it's another heat exchanger. How many of you know what a heat exchanger is? What comes to your mind when I say heat exchanger? Heat. <laughs> Very good. Changes all right. I mean, if I told you to show me a heat exchanger, what would you show me? What's the first, I mean, the, the most, the simplest heat exchanger that you Radiator. Off? A radiator. A radiator is a heat exchanger. A uh, condenser is a heat exchanger. An evaporator is a heat recorder heat exchanger. It's got coolant going through here. What about an intercooler for a turbocharged vehicle? You know, basically that hot air is going through there, and it's going through, and it's got fins, and it cools it off. Okay, the long and the short of it is, this right here is the condenser, and inside here, Invisible is the evaporator because you can't see it because it's covered up. And you have these lines. Now I want you to remember this. The compressor, we're going to start in the compressor because that's the business end of this thing where everything is being moved. All right, now this line right here is going to the condenser, right? So what do you call this line right here? Now, that is the discharge line. That is the discharge line. And you notice on this particular set, the Discharge line is typically where the high side, high side charge port is, right? Usually. All right, so here we go to the condenser. Now, in the condenser, coming out of this, um, in, this high, in this discharge line, what state is the refrigerant in in that discharge line? Vapor. Uh, high pressure vapor, right? High pressure vapor. So it's just high pressure vapor because this has squeezed it and it's kind of hot. If you touch that line, it's going to be hot. And it's going into this condenser, and what happens to it in the condenser? It, hmm? it condenses. What happens whenever I set a glass of cold iced tea out here, or a soda pop or something? Little beads of moisture form on it, right? Have you seen? I got really tickled one day at the big little store. I stopped, I was walking in there to pay for something. There was a car sitting there, and it was water just draining out and draining out. And this guy was worried about that. He was looking in there, and the guy that drove the car, and this guy says, oh, that's a freeze plug. You've popped a freeze plug on the right rear of your motor back there. Yeah. And I went walking by there, and I said, it's not a freeze plug. It's an evaporator drain. He goes, oh, yeah, that's the evaporator drain. That's where the <laughs> He just immediately changed gears and started talking about the evaporator drain. But the evaporator drain, that clear, cold water that pours out of the ground, comes off this evaporator. But right here, the condenser is basically where it turns internally. This high-pressure gas turns into high-pressure liquid. And then it leaves. Now, let me pause for a second to say that some of them will have the receiver dryer mounted on the end of this thing, 
and they'll actually have two different chambers and they, they call it a subcooler because not only does it turn the refrigerant into liquid, it cools it off. So that's called a subcooler. And it looks just like a condenser except it's got that, if it's got the, uh, uh, that long skinny tube on the side of it that's got your little desiccant sock in it, that's typically going to be a subcooler. That's a different thing. But long and short of it is this liquid comes out of that thing and this is high pressure liquid. Now you notice I've got colors. Whenever it's hot but not as hot as it's going to get, I've got it this color. It comes out of here as a liquid. I got it really hot. See, I got it red hot. It ain't red hot, but it's hotter than this. It's hotter than that typically. When it gets right here, you notice it changes to green. The orifice tube is right there. Put your thumb over the end of the water hose, and it sprays out as a mist. What does that mist do? It evaporates pretty fast, doesn't it? The finer the mist, the more evaporation you have. Right. Okay, so it goes in here, it changes from a high pressure liquid to a low pressure liquid. A low pressure liquid. And when it goes into that evaporator, that evaporator, what happens in the evaporator? Low pressure uh, vapor. It evaporates. Not complicated, right? What happens when it evaporates? It uh, releases heat. It absorbs heat. Yeah. I mean, to make it simple, you step out of the shower, do you feel cold sometimes, particularly in the winter? And why does that? Which part? Why do you feel cold when you step out of the shower? Because all that water evaporates, takes the heat with it. Well, yeah. the water that you're in is evaporating off your skin. And it's taking the heat with it. Yeah. It's because the water has got to, you know, yeah, it's carrying the heat with it. So it's basically carrying heat away. That's what that does. What's the boiling point of uh, R134 refrigerator? A lot. 300 degrees Kelvin. 21 degrees below zero is the boiling point for R134. I can so take how some... Does if, not, huh? How, how does it not, like... Never mind. I, it I don't know boils, how to ask the question. It boils in this. What's the temperature of that evaporator? It's never going to go below 32 degrees. What happens if it goes below 32 degrees? That condensation that's on it turns it into a brick of ice. Mm -hmm. And then it does it. That's why you want to make sure you have a pressure cycling switch or that thing you're changing. And that Hyundai out there is going to basically be measuring the temperature. And if it gets too cold, it's going to kill the compressor so that it's got time to warm back up just a little. But they're going to keep it down close to about 32 degrees, right? So here, and so that's the blower motor. It's basically we push an air through there, and it goes into the car and cools you off. And all that. So anyway, the evaporator, it comes into this little accumulator. And this accumulator is set up. It's got a desiccant bag in it so that it absorbs any moisture that might be there. And then it's got this loop in there of uh, this tube right here is basically drawing the refrigerant out of the top of the loop so that it cannot under any circumstances get any liquid refrigerant. Why do you not want any liquid refrigerant in this land? Because it's going to a compressor and if it goes to the compressor it'll try to stop it because you can't compress liquid, right? Mm -hmm. All right, but there's all this refrigerant that are puddled up here in a liquid state. And there's a hole in the bottom of the loop. It looks like that, except it's inside here. And there's a little hole in there with a screen on it. And whenever that uh, hole lets some oil that's mixed in with the refrigerant go in there, and it's basically going to be carried to the compressor. How many of you guys ever use a chainsaw? All right, what do you have to do? You don't just put gas in a chainsaw. You've got to mix oil with it, don't you? Because where does that gas and stuff go? It blows through the crankcase, and it lubricates the engine. Well, this oil that's mixed with this refrigerant blows through this where all these pistons are and it lubricates that. So that's how that basically works and then it starts all over again. Now, does everybody, is everybody burning this in? you everybody understand what I'm saying here? Everybody understand what I'm talking about? Basically, your refrigerant is just, it's going in a circle and it's turning into liquid. You know, it's changing states. As it turns into liquid, the condenser it gives off heat. As it turns into vapor, it gives off, I mean, it absorbs heat. Now, the two principles that this is based on is the latent heat of vaporization, which happens in here, and the latent heat of condensation. That's what they call them. There's, and I will tell you something else. You will never use those two principles to fix a car. <laughs> Any more than in 9 times out of 10 or 99 times out of 100, you will never use Ohm law, Ohm's law to fix anything electrical. But it's part of the way we teach it, so you'll kind of understand the theory of the principle behind it. All right, you got that? Everybody got that. Now, what we're going to do here, huh? On my truck, that big white piece that the green line connects to, Yeah. on the inside of the cab where that holds up, I got water dripping in. 
Yeah, you got a bad heater cord. All right, this right here, these two heater hoses, these are water hoses. I should have I should have talked about this. Believe it or not, that's a cold engine lockout switch on some of the older Fords. Uh, until the heater, until the uh, water temperature in the heater hoses reached 130 degrees, the fan wouldn't work because they didn't want blowing cold air if you're trying to get heat, right? Yeah. So when the fan finally, when it cooled, finally got warm enough, it started blowing warm air. But anyway, these right here are your hoses, and the water pump's going to push uh, cool it through there. Uh, future reference: If there's two different size hoses, you got to make sure that you don't somehow or another manage to get it hooked up backwards. As silly as that sounds, a lot of the time, or in, or if the Heater core has got an orifice in one side. The uh, coolant that's leaving the engine basically needs to go through the orifice and come out the bigger hose. Because if it's going in a bigger hose trying to come out a smaller one, it's going to make pressure and the heater core is going to bust. Right? So you don't go there. And if you're having to pinch one off to see if you're going to cool that thing down and make sure your AC is not having issues for that reason, make sure you don't pinch off the one that's coming out of it because you can bust the heater core that way too. Well, Most people don't think about that. Everywhere. Yeah. All right. Now then, we're going to make sure that everybody knows this. This is a refrigerant diagram. Okay. You understand this is sort of a diagram. The other was a 3D, right? Now this was on your back of your chest, wasn't it? Yeah. Did you ever? Uh, did you? Did you do it right? Yeah, it's easy. Huh? Oh, uh, you can draw this, huh? That's the orifice. Yeah. Well, that's the orifice tube right there. Okay, A is the orifice tube. Now, is that right, what's B? Like 10 where it gets clogged is the orifice tube. Huh? If it's got a clog, is that where it's at most of the time? Typically, so because the orifice tube is the smallest there. place where anything has to go through. Matter of fact, I, I just sent a, uh, in my Dropbox folder, I just wrote about, I need to show you guys a picture of an orifice tube. Let me get in here with Richard and Pete. Oh, no, Pete's already pulled all those files out of there. Oh, slap a taste out of his mouth. Okay. <laughs> I was going to show you guys something really quick. Bless his heart. Okay. Anyway, a little orifice tube, and there's a little plastic thing about that thing that's got a screen on it. You know, it's not hard. It's not a dollar and a half in the store. Uh, but that is a really important piece right there. And without that in there, the AC won't work at all. It's got to be in there because that's actually where it, you know, it chokes it up and turns it into a low pressure liquid to go in here to evaporate, which this is the what? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, you guys, talk to me. What is this? Evaporator. Evaporator. Very good. Okay. And this right here is the what? Accumulator. Accumulator. It's got the little desk bag in there. And this right here? Compressor. Compressor. And this? Okay. So basically, if you're going to start at the compressor and draw the way this refrigerant goes, where how would you do it? Where is this going to go? It's going to go to the E, letter E. This one here. Uh -huh. and goes through here. Go. Got it. And then doesn't that go to C? Here? Nope. That goes here. Okay. And then that goes here. Okay. That goes here. Here. That's right. Okay. There. Got it? Okay. Bingo. All right. Now then. Okay. Let's see. We'll do that one there. What's the difference in this system and the other one? Uh, I don't see uh, the, <laughs> the, uh, the one where your your mouse is, yeah. there's nothing there. Thermal like expansion that. valve. That's the difference. And that's Instead of an orifice, orifice, we got a thermal expansion valve, right? What's the letter C? Okay. This is a C right here is the receiver dryer, which does the same job as the accumulator. Okay. We're going to start the compressor again. Notice this is the same. The discharge line goes here. Right? The liquid line goes through the receiver dryer, and then it goes through here, and then it goes there. Got it? Got it. And then it comes out of here, and it goes back through there, in another through another passage. Got a little alcohol sensor in here, and basically it can change the little orifice that's in here changes sizes based on temperature. That's that's why they call that other one a fixed orifice, and this is a thermal expansion valve because it. As it's measuring the temperature of this, if it gets too cold, it changes the size of that orifice, which changes the quality of it. All right, so basically, in other words, it changes the temperature of this to keep it from freezing up and all that. So anyway, this goes here, and it comes back there, and then it starts over. Everybody understand that? Remember now, it's really amazing to me. I could be talking to somebody who's worked on air conditioning for years on cars, and I'll say, did you ever think about the fact that if you've got a receiver dryer and a liquid line, you're going to have an expansion valve? And a couple will blink their eyes and said, I never thought about that, but you're right. <laughs> you know, they just took each system as it came without thinking about the big picture, you know. All right, that's how that works. Got it? All right.
Now, is everybody sufficiently bored and turn it into a skeleton now? Because you know, you know, classrooms kind of a classroom kind of. Right. Right.